Hi all, thanks so much for having me. I uh, am recording this for you all the way from little old New Zealand. Uh, I hope the convention's going really well so far. Uh, I thought I'd start by giving what's called a pipiha. Uh, it's the way we introduce ourselves in te reo Māori, our indigenous language. Tira koutou katoa, ko mōao te moanga, ko kopurererua te awa, ko Hawkins te whanau, ko Alicia toku ingoa. Tina koutou, tina koutou, tina koutou katoa. So that just gives you a little bit of background about where I come from and, and my name. Uh, so a little bit more about me. I have been working at STATS for about 15 years. Um, that in, in some places would consider me a lifer. I have had the pleasure of being able to work in heaps of different roles around the organisation, um, starting as an analyst all the way through to working in heaps of cool uh, leadership roles uh, in the methodology part of our business, production of official stats, leading the data system, which is where I am now. Uh, I did a stint as for a few years as director of our chief executive's office, uh, where I got to work with the minister and our exec team. I have worked in a bunch of different corporate parts of the business too, uh, so I feel pretty lucky to have had such a wide range of opportunities within the organisation. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about uh, the role that I have at the moment of working across the whole of government data system. I'm going to talk a, a bit about what that role looks like. Are all roles that give that cross-cutting nature of improving practice for the whole of government. So the way we give effect to the government chief data steward role is in four particular ways, uh, especially within my branch of the business. So we offer implementation support to all of government. So where we have, a, say, a standard that we want them to apply, we provide uh, the expertise to help them apply those should they need it. We provide best practice advice and guidance. So that might be about survey design and questionnaire development. Uh, we offer or facilitate system coordination. Um, we know that a big part of what government needs is the ability to draw those connections and, and have visibility of what's going on across all of government. Uh, so with that one in particular means I get to drink lots of coffees and hang out uh, with others across all of government regularly. Uh, and we also set system expectations. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about one of our key pieces of work that has been designed with that in mind. So in 2018, we did a, an algorithm assessment report. And one of the findings or recommendations within that was to develop an algorithm charter. So we launched that in July this year and have had really positive feedback from it. Uh, I'm particularly proud of uh, my team and the work they have done to develop this. I thought uh, now would be a good time to acknowledge the important role data plays in decision making. I'm incredibly passionate about this and it's why I do what I do. Uh, I've been incredibly heartened by the role that data has been playing through COVID, um, but more broadly than that, I think it's just growing and growing uh, worldwide. Um, the use of data in policy decision making has been key here in New Zealand. Um, the Ministry of Health publish detailed data on the number of cases of COVID. Uh, there's even a register that provides uh, individual records, obviously any identifiable information is removed, but we know uh, for each case the age group, the sex, whether they've returned from overseas and the region that they live in. And I think the transparency of this detailed information plays a key role in the trust and confidence. So our response to COVID-19 here at STATS. 
I'm going to give you information about how we responded both as a national statistical office, but also in our role uh, as data system lead. So there were there was a major impact for us in terms of our ability to keep doing our social surveys. Uh, both our household economic survey and our general social survey are collected as face to face, so knocking on the door. Uh, there was an agreed approach taken across all of government that anyone that was producing a survey was to stop during lockdown. Uh, and, and the approach was agreed as to when, it was, when we would go back into the field. So I think that was a really good outcome. So whilst it wasn't great that we weren't able to carry out those surveys, at least there was consistency across all of government. We were also able to keep collecting some wellbeing information, which we did through our household labour force survey. So a supplement was added on to that survey. It, it's a survey that uh, we interview people over eight quarters, the same people, and the first time we collect information from them is through a face-to-face -face interview, but the following seven contacts are made uh, via the phone. So this enabled us to keep collecting information from people. Uh, so one of the things we did uh, in terms of our government chief data steward role was to establish a collaboration platform. So we did this through Microsoft Teams and it was designed for agencies to all join into this one uh, jointly hosted uh, platform and they could chat. They could ask each other questions. They could get that visibility of what each other were doing. Within it, we also added a register. So agencies could populate the register with work either that they'd already delivered or were in the process of working on or had been commissioned to do. And part, what, what prompted us to do this was recognition that there was a fair amount of duplication going on across the system. So we know that there were at least five different wellbeing surveys stood up through COVID, which is not surprising. It's important information that people needed to know. Uh, but had we had a platform like this from the beginning, I think that this might have helped us ensure that we were more joined up and maybe not all going out seeking the same information from people. Arguably, the most popular tool we produced was the COVID-19 data portal. So this was established following uh, recognition of the need for more real-time frequent data. That timeliness factor became one of the things that was most critical. So when you look at all of those um, different dimensions of quality when you're developing statistics, typically as a national statistical office, Accuracy is our most important thing to be able to do. In this environment, that that timeliness uh, was and frequency was critical for decision making, particularly in the economic space. Uh, we have within this portal um, economic health and social indicators, and it has data not just from what we produce here at Stats, but um, a number of other sources input to it as well. Uh, following the Auckland outbreak that I mentioned just before, a regional filter was built into this, and that uh, that really helps with situations where you have one part of your country that is in a different alert level than other parts. Uh, another one of the really uh, credible pieces of work that has been delivered is through our data ventures part of the business. So this is um, what has been previously referred to as our commercial arm of the organisation. And they, uh, for a long time now, have been doing work with the telcos, uh, getting population movement data through uh, people's spending, uh, people's mobile phones. Uh, and then more recently, uh, information from payment providers to be able to understand people's spending habits. Uh, so the, the data on uh, people's movements fed into decision making on our alert levels and how, how and when the decisions were made uh, across government with those alert levels.
One of the pieces of work that my team have done is a lessons learned exercise. So once we got through the kind of most challenging bit of COVID, uh, we commissioned a piece of work to try and understand how well the data system fared during COVID and what we could have done better. We, the, the crux of it, of what we learned, was that all the challenges that existed before were just heightened through COVID. There wasn't anything particularly new that we identified, um, which is a good thing, uh, but but those challenges that already existed became more so. Uh, so that's things like data about specific communities, uh, the ability to break data down at a regional level, what to do around um, sharing of data and consistent practice, the interoperability of data, and the application of data standards. Um, it's an area that's always been a challenge. Uh, it's not cheap or easy for agencies to make adjustments to align to data standards, but is critical to help with this sort of interoperability of data and decision making. So that was all I was going to uh, discuss today. I hope that it's been useful um, and, and I've really enjoyed being able to uh, present this information to you. Please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any further questions. Uh, we'd be more than happy to to answer them. Take care and uh, hope the rest of the convention goes well. Thanks.